Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0 Day 19. Uh, today we are going over opportunities, and we've been doing that for a couple of days now. Again, this is our sixth submenu or applet icon down, and we're going to click on opportunities. And yesterday we created a test opportunity. I have moved it to active. I did want to show you something I didn't show you yesterday is when you do have an opportunity created, it creates this opportunity card. So you can see this square here. And I have the ability to move this from stage to stage and also phase to phase by hovering over it. And when I get this hand icon, you can see it kind of turns to a hand. If I click on it, I can start dragging it. You see how the hand icon changed to a closed fist there? I can start moving that from stage to stage, or I can also move it from phase to phase. So let's say I want to move it back to appointment. I accidentally moved it to active or put it in the wrong phase there on accident. I can move that to the appointment phase, and we see the appointment here, or the, excuse me, the opportunity here, and I can actually move it from stage to stage by just dragging that left and right. All right. Uh, we've talked previously about checklists. I just wanted to give you a quick reminder on that because I said yesterday we would cover it. I realized we had already covered it. And yet when you go in to edit your stages, you will see now your stages may not look like this. These are what mine actually look like. But you'll see you have a number of different stages in here and each one of them will have checklist opportunities. It may say zero of zero right now and that's okay. You can always come over and click on that zero of zero and then see all of the different checklist items. You can look at mine here if you want uh, and you would want to go in, click on add item and list out every step of every stage of every phase. Now, I know that's going to take some time to do, but I would highly recommend it. I might even suggest, um, you know, working with your team on that. If you have a team <clears throat> working with your coach, your team leader, uh, maybe some other agents in the office and just kind of mastermind about what they have in their checklist. That way you can determine best practices for you and your market. In addition, once we're actually in an opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see in this opportunity, there's the checklist down here. So I've done zero of the two items for a checklist that is in the initial appointment stage. And if I wanted to add a specific item for this checklist, I could click on add item and that would add it for only this opportunity. So again, that's just a brief overview of checklist. We've kind of dived into that the last two days. Uh, today, I also want to get into a, an overview of the documents tab. So when you're inside your actual opportunity, you'll see several tabs at the top. And let's do a quick refresh. I'm not sure why it's hanging up there. There it is. <clears throat> so you'll see the details tab here. The second tab over is documents. So I'm going to click on the documents tab. And because this is a brand new opportunity, I have not assigned a checklist to it. I haven't actually started the transaction. This is what the screen is going to look like. So you can see in the middle of the screen, it does say to start work with opportunity, please select the checklist type first. Now, this is going to be dependent upon your MCA, your market center, your broker. Um, they are the ones kind of in control of these checklists and developing them and then building them out. So you can see I have for my market center, we have a residential checklist and then we have one that was built before 1978. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the residential checklist. And it gives me a warning. It does say, hey, if you're changing your checklist type and you've done any amount of work, you're about to lose it all, basically. Uh, changing the checklist type will reset your compliance progress. You'll have to attach all your documents again to a new checklist type and resubmit all your compliance event. Are you sure? So pay special attention to these checklists when you're choosing them to make sure it's the appropriate checklist for your transaction. And I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm. As soon as I click on confirm, you can see a lot of things start to happen. So first of all, on the left hand side, I have three folders that have been created. I have my listed folder my under contract folder and my closed folder. Within each one of these folders are a series of documents. So you can see in the listed checklist for my market center, there are 43 possible document placeholders. And that's what each one of these are. They are a placeholder for a specific document. As we start to scroll down, you can see the document name. You can see whether it is required, conditionally required or optional. 
You do have the ability, your MCA does, to add some notes to kind of further explain a little bit about the document. And then you have the document type. On the far right hand side, we have the ability to add a file and we'll get to that in just a second. So as I scroll down, you're going to see a series of required documents for transactions here in Texas. These are either our Texas Association or our truck documents that we need to have. Yes, I know in California you're getting very jealous this list is not very long for required documents. Conditionally required, so you see now we have a series of conditionally required documents. And those are only required if the home, the listing, etc. meets a specific criteria. So for example, um, let's say it's a condominium, right? So if it was a condo that I was listing, then I have to have a condominium addendum. If I was listing a property that was already tenant occupied, I would have to have copies of any leases. So you can kind of go through here and see conditionally required documents. As we get to the very bottom, you're gonna see this change to no longer conditionally required and yet optional. So here are all the optional items that could be added to this file. When I go back up to the top, I can see that if I choose another one of my folders, so this is when the property is listed before it goes under contract. Once it goes under contract, I have another series of documents that I need to upload to this transaction. And now you can see there are another series of placeholders for documents that are either required, conditionally required, or optional. The same thing happens when I click on closed. My MCA has several documents that he wants uploaded to the file, a copy of the closing disclosure, the buyer walkthrough, the DA, and copies of any checks. So we've got all of that. If for any reason there are items that you want to add to one of these folders that are not listed, you do have the ability to click on add item. And that will allow you to name the document, the document type, you can put in a note if you want, and then you can find where that document is. So you can manually upload it from your computer, or if you've already added the document to your custom folders, and I'll show you those in just a second, you can actually move it from custom folders into one of these big three folders listed under contract or closed. So I'm gonna X out of there. In custom folders, you can see here, we do have the ability to add custom folders to each one of our opportunities. So I could click on this and I could name it something very general, like additional supporting documentation, something like that. Um, if it was something where it was floor plans, I want to be very specific. Maybe I had, you know, multiple floor plans or it was the uh, floor plan, the pool plan, you know, the remodel plan, whatever it is. You have the ability to upload those documents into a custom folder and name the folder first. And then, of course, you would be able to upload it from there. Finally, at the very top, you do see this start transaction button with a drop down box. When I click on this drop down box, you can see I have the opportunity to either connect this transaction to DocuSign or connect this transaction to DotLoop. These two buttons show up because in the earlier videos, one of the first one or two, I believe, we talked to you about setting up your settings in command up here under the drop down box arrow and I connected my DocuSign account, I connected my .loop account. So I have the ability to choose which one of these two electronic signature programs I want to use to process my documents. I know that this is a personal decision, it's probably also a market center decision, um, not necessarily their decision, but your decision based upon where the market center is with regards to the DocuSign command integration, um, with all of our boards and our documents getting uploaded. I know some uh, areas still don't have their documents uploaded to DocuSign. Um, so basically that's your choice. I, I always choose DocuSign lately because one, DocuSign has signed the data pledge and DotLoop has not. And of course, I'm always gonna prefer somebody that has signed that data pledge that I can trust my information with. So as soon as I click on DocuSign, it's basically going to spin for a second and then it should pull me into DocuSign and allow me to begin to sign in to my DocuSign Rooms account, put in my username and password, and then it's going to connect me to DocuSign. So we're not gonna dive into this today, we will in future challenges, and yet just a way to kind of show you how that works. Now I have the ability when I go to add a file, I can click on add a file and you can see that I can manually upload these documents if I've downloaded them out of my signature program or now that I've connected DocuSign to this transaction, I can click on DocuSign and it will look for any specific documents that are already in 
that DocuSign room because I don't have any loaded in there right now. It's not showing any. And yet once I load in all those documents, get them filled out and signed, it makes it much easier to upload the documents by just clicking on the actual icon next to the document, click on assign, and that's gonna drop the document right into this placeholder. The last thing here within the folders, is, this is relatively new, is the ability to have folder level comments. So you do have the ability to comment here. You can type in a message and it'll show it here for your, um, and maybe it's your compliance director, your MCA, your broker, whoever's reviewing these files. Uh, you now have the ability to communicate back and forth um, about the folder using this folder level comments um, option here. So that's it today, guys. Uh, basically a brief overview of checklists and the documents tab within KW Command. We're going to spend some time here in the future going through DocuSign um, and all of the kind of things that need to be done within DocuSign to get your documents loaded, sent off, returned, and then back uploaded into your folder. So look forward to that in the next couple of days. Guys, as always, I hope you're having a fantastic day. It is future day two. Uh, I feel like as a guy named Marty, I'm okay with using the pun that we're going back to the future. Um, so pretty excited about that. Again, uh, if you're watching this video and haven't signed up for my notes, feel free to visit one of the KW Command groups and uh, see the form there or send me an email and I will add you to the list as well. Uh, but preferably use the Google form and uh, that way I can get it out and sent out to everybody by tomorrow. Hope you're having a fantastic day and as always, I will look forward to speaking with you in the morning. Thanks guys.